we seem to live in the multiverse. Okay? Uh, this is not something, it's just some random imagination. It's suggested by both observation and theory. And on the observational side, there are mounting evidence that we live in a super, hyper, extremely special universe, which is very hard to understand unless we think that our universe is one of the many, many, many different universes and we are anthropically selected to live in. On the theoretical side, we learn that there is something called uh, inflation where the vacuum energy dominates, then that inflation expands exponentially <laughs> the universe, and then that happens because it's so fast exponentially happening, and those universes will decay into other universes by quantum tunneling effect, but that does not percolate. Those bubbles, bubble universes won't percolate. The process happens infinitely forever. That will populate many bubble universes, next universes, next universes, and the particle theory, especially string theory, suggests that all these universes have a different properties different electron mass, different particles, and different cosmological constant. Therefore, you can explain the apparent coincidence or specialness of a universe pretty much the same way that we live in the special planet because you have many, many planets and we, we live here because you're not there otherwise. Okay? But this uh, eternally inflating multiverse picture <laughs> have a far-reaching implication. Because of the eternity of this inflationary process, uh, the space-time looks like infinite, okay? infinitely large. It just happens forever and big, and it goes on forever. Okay? And this will lead to the predictivity crisis, which was well summarized by Alan Guth, the, the way, of the, way of saying, like in the eternal infinite universe, anything that can happen will happen. In fact, it happens in, in many times. So if you want to define any probability, for example, if you define a probability with some event A happens, some event B happens, how to define? <laughs> From frequency sense, you count the number of times A happens in the space time, number of times B happens in the space time, both are infinity, okay? Not undefined. As a physicist, you may think, oh, come on, infinity, you just cut off, you produce regularization, you introduce regularization, you compute, but then we learned in the past uh, uh, decade that uh, uh, the answer, the prediction of physical theory, pretty much depends on what kind of regularization, what kind of cutoff you include in the theories, beyond the principle of quantum mechanics and special relativity or general relativity. So in fact, this is called a major problem, and many people contributed, many people did the good work, and, but the problem can be uh, decomposed into several pieces. Okay? The first of all, of course, we have infinity. You have to deal with this infinity, how to regularize it, and then even if you regularize it, how you choose that particular regularization, what's the principle behind it? And then even if you succeed in regularization, to make a top-down prediction, you need to know the initial state of this, what the beginning, beginning of the multiverse. Okay? You need to know that. And you need to know the conditioning that what's the observation, what means the observation, what the measurement means. And all these problems are packed under the name of the major problem. So you have to address all these. Okay? And, and uh, it was work done by uh, many important people, uh, important work done by, by many people. Most of them are here, so you will hear uh, opinion. So below, I think I would just tell you uh, my own view on the problems, part of the video on uh, the other's work, which I have been playing around in the uh, past couple of years. And the basic message is that the quantum mechanics is essential. Not in a just the usual sense, oh, we live in a quantum world, so of course you have to do it in quantum mechanics, but it's crucially, this is a crucial essence of this major problem. And in, in particular, one important thing is that you particularly have to fix something called gauge, gauge redundancy, like redundancy of describing gravitational system. You have to particularly treat that in the right way. Then you arrive at the picture that actually what we call multiverse is exactly almost same as a, what Quantum many, the evidence is said the quantum many world in, in a special sense, in a specific sense. And, but the problem is not completely solved, but there's a remaining problem that is the problem of the conditioning. I will come, to, come back to that. It's a bone rule and so on, how to think about bone rule in a finite system. So um, uh, the multiverse equals quantum many world in what sense? Of course, in, in some sense, it must be true, of course, we're living in a quantum world, but in, in certain special, specific sense. Okay? To do this, the basic uh, principle, I, uh, hypothesis I take, is that the basic structure of the quantum mechanics is valid. Even if you apply that to the entire multiverse. Say you have a Hilbert space and you have a linearity principle. The bottom rule is a bit tricky, but other than that, it's a structure, the kinematic structure of the quantum mechanics stays. Okay? 
Under that hypothesis, if you think carefully about the fixing of the um, redundancy of describing gravitational system, then you arrive at the picture that the multiverse, in fact, lives in probability space. Not in the conventional sense of uh, a big space, which is infinitely large, that will lead to your infinity. No. In fact, in a certain sense, you live only in probability space. Yeah. So that will change the view that how we have to view global space-time we are so used to in general relativity. So I will explain that. Okay? That's, that's, that's where I'm going, the first part of the talk. So to do this, let's think about, because we're talking in quantum mechanics in a system with a gravity, so let's talk about a simple, quote, quote, simple system called black hole. So let's think about the black hole. Okay? You throw into some objects a book. Okay? You throw in the book, what will happen? What will happen is the book will be absorbed into the horizon of the black hole, and then later it will stay there for a while, and then later come back as a Hawking radiation. And at some point, the Hawking thought that this is information loss, but we, most of us don't think that's the case. Now we think if you throw in some book A, and then that stays on the horizon coming back as a Hawking radiation, if you send a different book, different book B, then the different Hawking radiation comes out. It's both black body or more or less gray body radiation, but the details are different, like quantum correlation and so on is different. Okay, so it's okay, it's just the information coming back. It's suggested by many theoretical arguments. But the problem happens if you think about, if you just look, in, look at the same process, if you, uh, you means not the physical you, okay, your reference frame, okay, you just think about the reference frame, you're falling in with the book. What happens? General relativity tells you that uh, the book will just pass through and go to interior. <laughs> without noticing anything. It's just the horizon, you just pass through. Okay? Although that is, uh, uh, there is some debate about this picture. It may hit some like, drastic thing like call firewall, and you have to wait the discussion on Thursday. But no matter what, you seem to have some interior if you're falling with the book. Falling with the book means that you choose a different frame falling with that book. Does that mean that you have interior space? Independently from exterior space, you postulate it. What I said is that if you send in the book, all the information about book will be in the exterior later time in the form of Hawking radiation. But that means that interior cannot exist because the quantum information cannot be copied. It's a famous uh, no cloning theorem. So if you postulate that the quantum mechanics is absolutely right, even if you apply it to the whole multiverse and so on, you cannot independently assume it as an independent degrees of freedom. <laughs> you have exterior space and interior space. If you stay exterior, interior space literally doesn't exist. Okay? Only after you change the reference frame, then interior or firewall, whatever you, 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 you think, will show up. Okay? If it's a short, yeah. Well, you're assuming that the information doesn't transfer back out. No, no, I assume that information doesn't transfer back. What's that? Information will be in the, in the Hawking radiation. You say it doesn't transfer yeah. Yes, that, that's why you can't independently assume interior because otherwise it's copying. Because information is already in Hawking radiation. Yeah, let, let's wait. I mean, this, this, this is not the proper set. Okay? So, but the, 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 the set of people pointed out that, that this is an apparently not a contradiction because you cannot be at the same time staying at exterior getting Hawking radiation or your frame is falling with it and you see the interior either. Okay? It's just the description looks so different, but it's not at the same time. <laughs> So that's fine. It's like Lorentz contraction. Somebody says this pen is 10 centimeter. If you're moving, somebody says 8 centimeter. It's either, okay? It's just you have a transformation rule that uh, uh, the picture looks different, okay? What's the lesson? What to do with, I mean, what, what all these to do with the, with the cosmology we're talking about? Okay? The lesson is that including both exterior space-time Hawking radiation and interior space-time, or interior firewall, whatever that is, is double counting, okay? If both are there as independent degrees of freedom, then independent degrees of freedom, okay? So, so then, then the quantum mechanics rule is violated. So in order to keep the, the, the description of nature, just focusing on independent degrees of freedom, or approximate locality, that's crucial to discuss the measurement, because locality plays a role to organize what the measurement is. I, if I have time, I can come back. To do that, then equal time hypersurface, or quantization hypersurface, or the, the spatial hypersurface, which element of the Hilbert space represents, 
must be on the exterior space or something you can operationally access. Okay, you cannot include both. In cosmology, now it's the same thing. Okay, in a black hole, if you stay exterior, you can only access exterior space time. So you have to include only exterior space time, not interior. It doesn't exist. Only after reference frame change, it will show up. Okay? Similarly, in cosmology, you have a cosmological horizon. Okay? Now you are interior, but other exterior to the cosmological horizon, suitably defined, and that space does not exist. Your state, the quantum state, your element of the Hilbert space must represent only the spatial region, which is within the horizon, something you can operationally access. Okay? But then what's a multiverse? Did I say that the multiverse has eternally inflating huge space and so on, it's exponentially, so you have a bubble universe here and there outside the horizon. What that concept is, is not the crucial to discuss some coincidence in our universe and so on? The answer is probability. Because this process of creating a baby uni a bubble universe and next universe, all quantum mechanical tunneling process. Okay? So you're starting from some eternally inflating space. Probabilistically, some universe is created. You may be entering it. If some other universe could potentially produce, the probabilistically, you're entering it. So your uh, quantum state is branching into many different universes. But the point is that in each of the term, be present only within the horizon, no infinitely large space. Okay? Otherwise, it's a double counting. Your state is just representing what you can access. It's so only within the cosmological horizon. Okay? And, and the multiverse exists only in the sense that it's a probabilistic superposition. You could have been in a different universe with, uh, I don't know, somebody, I don't know, I may have died yesterday in that one of the branches. It's just all possible superposition of probabilities. And that's the crucial thing. Okay? And you have to view that way. So in that real sense, the multiverse must be the quantum many worlds. Okay? It must only be quantum many worlds. Okay? Because you don't have any real thing, real, real infinite space. Okay? So in other words, the probability first. What is most fundamental is the probability. You can really reconstruct some, something called global space-time, like a maximally extended uh, the black hole, like exterior is there, interior is there, you can effectively view both, but at the cost of overcounting. So if you think about infinite space and the counting of Zappa, you would vastly overcounting, you hit the infinity, the end of the story. Yeah? But that's all fake. The probability is there, the probability first. <laughs> In fact, what we have been doing in the technical world, this is a bit technical, in the technical world, the fixing reference frame you're seeing from some freely falling frame, freely falling frame is always can be erected, that's the theorem, or that's the principle of general relativity. And this viewing everything from freely falling frame is corresponding to fixing a part of the redundancy of the general relativity. It's called, of course, general covariance or whatever, okay? The extension of that in the string theory. So you're fixing the, 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 the description Redundancy of description, okay, it's correspond to that. I'm not really be able to explain that, but, okay. But there are uh, uh, residual, residual redundancy in a description because you could change this difference frame, freely falling local Lorentz frame too. If you just translate in one frame, you have a Dossett region and you have only within the Dossett horizon and the horizon. Now, if you do the translation, the different frame, then what it looks horizon now looks space time, and part of the region it looks space time now looks horizon. Fine. Okay? If you change the different frame, things look sometimes space time, sometimes not space time. That's the extension of something like what we experience in Lorentz transformation. If you do the Lorentz transformation, length changes and time duration changes and the simultaneousness changes. Now, if you turn on the gravitational Newton constant, of course, what space time? <laughs> And what the horizon, what the Hawking radiation, of course, change with respect to the, to, to the difference frame. Well, that's like really natural region, not, not natural direction we kept learning in the past uh, a century or so. So that's fine. That's beautiful. But this itself is still something called gauge redundancy. Okay? For example, time translation, time evolution. Time evolution is the same thing as sifting coordinate of time. That's the redundancy of description. If this is a really redundancy, at the very, very, very fundamental level, the quantum state should not depend on that redundancy. So that's like a gauge principle. 
That is to do with the final question, which I want to address, that what's the initial condition of the multiverse? Because to do the, any prediction, you need to have the initial condition. Then you can evolve and so on and predict it, but then what the beginning and so on. My answer is that you don't need those because time evolution is a gauge, it's a redundancy. Time evolution is the same as shifting a coordinate of time. You should divide that redundancy in a quantum state. Namely, quantum state must be invariant under that coordinate transformation. So let's think about uh, um, um, and some uh, 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 quantum uh, uh, translation operator called Hamiltonian, of course, H. If you uh, uh, operate the H to the quantum state, it should, by, it should eliminate the, the quantum state. Of course, this is called a uh, Hoyer Dwight equation, if you know, in the closed universe. But people thought, of course, if it's an infinite dimensional thing, because of the infinite boundary, you can't apply this. No, claiming that you can always apply this, you have to divide out by that. Okay. Partly because now the quantum state represents only within the horizon, it's a finite dimensional system for each time. Okay. Of course, the question is then, uh, the quantum state is just a static. Then you don't have any initial condition, any final condition. You just apply h psi equals zero, you solve it, and you apply normalizability, then you get the state. <laughs> that might be it, of course. Yeah. And then, of course, your question is why the time arises, because the state is completely static, h psi equals zero, e to the, I, e to the I h t is one. <laughs> then what's the time? But the time <laughs> is an emergent concept, of course. And the only thing that the time means is that <laughs> Time evolve means that if you ask some question, suppose you know the half of the room, you have a chair, then you ask the question, what would be in the other half of the room? Okay. What we usually say is that you, the other half of the room is some other half of the chair and so on. But if you complete just count the number of quantum states, of course, the most likely thing is a random mess. But if you always ask a question that if you know this, what the other half? you always get some extremely unlikely state, which is a deep, deep uh, 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 timely, deep, deep space, like an ordered one. If under any question your answer is always that, then we interpret that to have arisen from local, low cost brain entropy state as a time evolution. That's the only thing you need observationally, that the time is evolving. So if you ask the question on this static normalizable state, and you always get this answer. Your interpretation is always that the time evolved and entropy come from the lower state. So in, in, at the level of the more fundamental level, if you just ask h psi equals zero and solution and you ask a normalizability, and then you can get the just this quantum state. Now this quantum state, I'm expanding in a basis which has a well-defined uh, uh, spatial configuration. You expand in that the basis, Hilbert space basis. This state itself is static. If you apply e to the minus e to the iht, then it's just uh, come, come back to the original state. Okay? And if I apply normalizability, you may get the really, really unique quantum state of the multiverse, or maybe some, some like a few number, discrete numbers. By the way, this state you can't do. You can't get this state by thinking classically, semi-classically of the multiverse. Because for the expand, you know, if you, if you follow this so freely falling frame in the multiverse, then what you would genetically get is to hit the singularity, as Raphael pointed out. That's, you hit the singularity, or you are diluted into infinite dimensional Minkowski space. Okay, if it stays in Minkowski space, then there is no other process. You just dilute into Minkowski space or singularity. But then the state is non-normalizable. So applying just the normalizability of the principle that uh, uh, the, to define a, quant a quantum probability, the state must be normalizable. And then you're selecting some very special state, the finely tuned state, that the, before going to those kind of singularity or something, you get back, backwards in a quantum mechanical process. Classically, you can never see this state, which is not different from hydrogen atom. Suppose you think about hydrogen atom, proton is there, electron is there. If you think about it in a classical way, <laughs> Of course, electrons, synchrotron radiate, and the spiral, and the system itself is un unstable, and you don't have a system. The very existence of the system is quantum mechanical. It's a finely tuned state from classical point of view. Finely tuned state, very special state, the measure zero state. That's what is selected by quantization condition, usually normalizability. And this may be happening for the multiples itself. The existence of multiples is intrinsically quantum mechanical. It's just a solution by h equals zero. Okay, the normalizable solution. 
But that will lead to interesting question that you have to define bone rule and probability in finite, effectively finite dimensional Hilbert space because normalizable means that the number of terms is effectively finite. Okay? So you have to define bone rule. That's highly non-trivial job because usual bone rule, by the way, is assuming that there is some infinite dimensional environment that is selecting basis and so on. You can't do this. You have to in internally do all these things. So I'm wrapping up. So uh, a lot to start, but the summarizing, the multiverse is real. It's not just a pure imagination of theories. It's suggested to us by a cutting edge theory and observation. Okay? Uh, but it raises a question or challenge that how to define probability because if you take literally in the classical general relativistic infinite space point of view, then you are hit with infinity. But the point is that that's probably not the right way. If you think things in a quantum mechanically and think carefully about what the redundant, redundant thing is the other side of the horizon because you cannot access the other side of the horizon, that's the redundancy you should not include into your description, then most of the infinity is gone. But then you have to think all these multiple, multi, multiples is, is in probability space. You could have been in the other universe. You could have been this universe. You could have been that universe. So you have to think about that way. And that provides a framework to discuss further question. What's the beginning? What's the initial condition of a quantum state? And if you push that further, and then you may even arrive at the, at the picture. This is a pushing further. If you put the normalizability of the state, then you may have a completely quant static quantum state, and like psi. That's kind of generating function of the multiverse. You have to extract the question. Uh, you have to extract the answer to the question. You inject the question, you extract the answer. You inject the question, you extract the answer. That should be some suitably extended bone rule. Cannot be the usual bone rule, because the usual bone rule says that uh, uh, you really, you really just a project onto the coefficient square. But you can't do this because the Hilbert space itself does not even contain any information. It's just a dimensionality. You have to refer to operators. And you have to do, because this is a space time, time is also involved, you have to do this projection operation. You have to come up with something, which I have some ideas, but it not, not yet really said. And this is a remaining thing. And if you solve this, you may be able to have a framework to top down a prediction in, in a quantum multiverse. Not yet, but I'm optimistic. Thank you.